What's going on guys, it's your boy Christian and welcome your faces back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be back into the Sony FS5 Beginner's Guide. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the shutter on the FS5. So let's go ahead and get into the video. So a lot of you guys have been enjoying the series and you guys have been having questions and concerns. I'm going to start a little pool of comments and concerns and start putting them at the end of this episode going forward. Now before we jump into the shutter speed here on the FS5, we're going to be going over shutter speed in general and the differences between shutter speed in photography and shutter speed in videography. So let's go ahead and go over the shutter speed in photography. In photography, the shutter speed determines how much light is captured at the press of a button. For photos, the faster the shutter, the less light is captured, and the slower it is, the more light you have captured when you're taking photos. Now for videography, it does change up just a tad bit, but you will get the gist of it by the time we get out of this video here. So in video, the shutter is the amount of time each individual frame is exposed for in video. It's typically measured in fractions of a second. Now for example, you have one over 48, you have 1 over 60 and then you also have 1 over 120th and when you see it broken down like a fraction like this majority of the time it is in a mirrorless camera and or a DSLR camera in film motion picture cameras they use a rotary disc to achieve exposure times with shutter speed and it's indicated as shutter angle the guys over at DP review have a great in-depth video on the differences between shutter speed and shutter angle if you guys want to go and check that out I will have it linked down in the description below but let's go ahead and talk about the shutter speed here on the Sony FS5 now that we have some backstory and a little bit of history about what shutter speed is in a whole the first things first you guys are probably asking is where is shutter speed located on the FS5 how many locations is it on on the FS5 and I want to say just like the rest of them there is two spots but there is only one spot for shutter speed here on the Sony FS5 and that's actually right on the side of the camera so it's from the operator side of the camera so you just press it it pops up with a little box around the current shutter speed and you're, you're able to adjust that with the select and selector dial I guess you would call it and you're also able to use the joystick on the handle grip to move the shutter speed up and or down and also set it where you want it actually I forgot to add that if you press the shutter button twice it will put you in automatic shutter just caught it in editing so back to the video now a good rule of thumb with shutter speed the last video we went over we did do frame rates so if you guys want to check that out if you've seen that video and you have been setting your frame rates here in the Sony FS5 if you have a 60 frame per second frame rate then you want to have your shutter speed at double that so 1 over 120th on your shutter speed and here on the Sony FS5 you just press that shutter speed crank it all the way up to 120 and then press select and you have changed your shutter speed here on the Sony FS5 but wait that is not it for the shutter speed here on the Sony FS5 if you want it to actually represent the shutter on the FS5 even though it is a Sony mirrorless camera you can also change this into shutter angle you just go into the menu go all the way down to display set and you want to go to shutter display mine is set into seconds and you can also change it into angle as well if you wanted to do a shutter angle as if you had that rotary dial so remember guys if you was wanting to change the shutter on your fs5 just press that shutter button scroll it up or scroll it down to get your desired shutter speed and remember if you're shooting 24 frames you're going to need 48 on that shutter speed and if you're shooting 60 you're going to need 120 on that shutter speed here on the sony fs5 to basically give that nice smooth motion you don't want it to be jarry or the shutter moving faster than your actual frame rate it's it's a weird conundrum if you get it you know kind of mixed up so make sure that shutter is always double 
of your frame rate and you can change this but we will get off into a, another video maybe down the line let's go ahead and get into that question and concern I'm gonna bring it up right over here on the MacBook Pro a shout out to my guy Anthony Rodriguez he's actually been using my tips and my techniques here in the Sony FS5 beginners guide and he's actually been having some success but he leaves this comment on my most recent video talking about FPS now he actually when when you usually shoot slow motion the shutter speed needs to be changed right I really just talked about that right here in this video so you should have gotten your answer right here in this video but he also has a, another concern here and he said also what is the difference if you set up recording settings to film in 60 frames per second in the standard 60 frames compared to the 60 frames you would adjust in slow and quick mode okay so here on the fs5 if you're shooting 60 frames in slow and quick it's basically going to replicate the same if you're shooting 60 frames at like 50 megabits per second on the like 1080p internally or externally recording it now if you was to go anything higher than 60 frames per second so if you push it up to maybe 120 frames maybe 240 frames that's when that slow and quick button comes into play so basically when you press on that slow and quick button you're able to go from basically one all the way up to 900 and I think 60 FPS here on the Sony FS5 but if you stop at 60 it's just like if you was recording 60 frames in 1080p just regularly here on the Sony FS5 without pressing that slow and quick button hopefully that wasn't too drawn out or it wasn't too confusing but um just to tie in to the uh the rest of the comment here uh you said 30 megabits 50 megabits and then some of them are slowed down so 30 megabits is basically going to just it's the quality it's the bit rate of what it's shooting and what is put into the file so of course the higher is going to be the better so always go with like 50 megabits per second unless you need that file size to be a little bit lower just know you're going to be losing a little bit of quality on that top end as well and then you said some of them aren't slowed down um of course if you are putting this into premiere you want to put a uh, majority of these on like a 24p timeline so just think about it you have 30 frames or 60 frames that you're putting on a 24 frame timeline so that clip is going to be interpreted as double the length of what it uh, normally would have been because it has double the frames and you should be good to go to of course slow it down or speed it up if you have more frames than what you have on your timeline in the video file that's to my guy anthony rodriguez thank you guys for tuning in to the video thanks my guy for actually dropping the comment you kicked off the whole starting of comments at the end of these videos so you guys can of course get get a little bit more insight on the previous video so this was the sony fs5 um frames per second video that this comment came from if you guys want a reference to it but anyways that's going to be it for this video if you guys did enjoy make sure you guys hit that like button if you want to see more sony fs5 beginner guide videos make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to see any more camera related videos we got slow motion settings a6400 a6000 we have it all over here make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and stick along for the long haul Anyways, it's your boy Christian, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.